I'm continuing my video series on the fake history of Cairo. This is part 3, the final part. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous videos, the links are in the description. I recommend watching them all, to get the full picture. I hope you don't get bored. Without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. This is a 1676 drawing, by Anastasius Kircher, based not on his own visitation, but on what he was told. We see people climbing down into a subterranean world below the pyramids. Not sure what's going on there. On the left we see a compass inside a square. There's a large chest or casket behind it. I decided to see how far back I could find drawings or paintings of the Sphinx, apart from the 1536 map. The very earliest I found was dated to 1610, a drawing by George Zandes. We see what the face of the Sphinx looked like before nose and lips were vandalized. Again. Why do I find nothing earlier for such an iconic structure? This is from 1744 by M. Tusher. Nose and lips are still intact. Just like in 1610, the Sphinx is mostly buried. Here's from 1760. We see at least seven pyramids and two sphinxes, neither buried. Louis Francois Casas drew this sphinx in 1790. Most of it is buried. This engraving is by Vivian Dinan, 1798. Notice the person climbing out of the head of the sphinx. There are many tales of there being an entrance at the top of the head. There's even photographic evidence for this, I will show it later. From Wikipedia. Johann Helfrich visited the Sphinx during his travels in 1565 to 1566. He describes that a priest went into the head of the Sphinx, and when he spoke, it was as if the Sphinx itself was speaking. Emile Berres closed the hole with a metal hatch in 1926. We, the public, have yet to receive an explanation why it was closed in 1926, and why 99.9% .9 of people aren't even told there's an entrance. This is an 1823 etching, with face and nose apparently still intact, but the body fully buried. Isidore Taylor made this painting in 1830. Again, nose and mouth are intact, but the body is partially buried. Otto Baron Hohen made this one in 1830. Then in 1840, we suddenly find the nose chopped off, in this painting by David Bates. By this time, the Sphinx is partially dug out. Does that tell us that it was vandalized sometime between 1830 and 1840? I think so. This is a photograph from the 1850s. And this photo, from 1920, shows the Sphinx with the opening at the top of the head. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. This is a map from 1154, called Tabula Regiriana. It's a real gem, showing what I consider pre-flood days, when the earth looked different. There is no doubt in my mind, about the map's accuracy, because many places listed here, still exist today. I'm showing you the map upside down, for the sake of familiarity. We see that North Africa and Arabia haven't changed much, Spain and Portugal are roughly the same. But Central Europe is different. The Red Sea is also very different, it used to be a very large body of water that reached all the way to China. This is consistent with other pre-flood maps. The map shows the legendary lighthouse of Alexandria in Egypt, but it makes no reference or mention of any pyramids. It doesn't even show Cairo. This is the relevant part upside down, from our perspective. We see al Iskandiria or Alexandria, and a great lighthouse. We see places like Tantana which still exists today, north of Cairo is Tanta, and we see Sul which still existed in the 1700s at the exactly same spot. But we do not see Cairo or Babylonia. The earliest mention of Cairo I found, was the 1170 map shown earlier. This map agrees with my estimate, in an earlier video, that the Great Flood that changed the face of the Earth, happened sometime between 1235 and 1252. The ancient say Babylon arose some time after the Great Flood. I also found no indication of Babel in Iraq. At around the center right of the map, you see Al-Basra, which still exists today in Iraq. 
North of it, south on this map, you see Baghdad, and realize, surely with fascination, just how old some of these places are. But there is no hint of Babel, which it is called today. I found things on this map that are explosive, but I'll have to leave those for another time. The only problem with my theory is that ancient Roman and Greek authors reference the pyramids in ancient Egypt. But a close look reveals that the many Romans and Greeks who wrote about it actually copied from very few people. The Greeks copied from Herodotus. And the Romans copied from Pliny the Elder. If these people were real and not recent fabrications, and if their accounts were honest, then my whole theory falls apart. But Pliny the Elder only became known in the 1600s. Before that, there is no reference of a Roman by that name. His writings just suddenly turned up. To me, that means Pliny the Elder may have been a fabrication, crafted by people the 1600s. And Herodotus. This historian suddenly turns up in the 1100s, in the Byzantine encyclopedia, called Suda. Before that, there is no evidence of him. So, for thousands of years nobody knows these people, and then they suddenly appear, fairly recently, with volumes about ancient history. Hmm. Apart from there being no pictorial evidence of the pyramids, there is also not a single ancient Egyptian hieroglyph or story that references the pyramids. Most people don't even know this. They just assume the pyramids are mentioned in Egyptian texts. The ancient Egyptians themselves make no mention of them. The most visible and marvelous feature isn't even worth a footnote. How is that possible? Nor is there a single text or image that talks about or shows how they were designed or constructed. Let's recap. 1. Maps older than 1500s don't show them. 2. Medieval histories of Egypt don't mention them. 3. The Crusaders didn't mention them. 4. Paintings and drawings before 1500s don't show them. 5. The Torah, Bible and Quran don't mention them. 6. The only proof of their ancientness are alleged reports by very few Romans and Greeks, whose writings miraculously appeared in the 1600s. Based on everything I've seen so far, I suspect the Greek, Roman and Egyptian civilization were one global empire, not three different ones, and not set apart in time. I asked a colleague what he associates with Greek civilization. Temples with pillars, he said. But the Romans also had those. The Egyptians too. And the Sumerians. And Aztecs. And Incas. This global empire was pre-flood. It was destroyed a thousand years ago. Maybe they tried to rebuild the empire a few times, but it kept getting destroyed. I'm intentionally limiting the scope and length of this video for easier digestion. If it inspired you to think outside the official narrative and consider a radically different reality, please share it far and wide. Knowledge dissemination relies on you, 